people. Today I want to discuss the call for a police officer to come out of reasonable suspicion because what a lot of us are running into is the fact that you're going out, someone's saying, oh, well, this guy is out here with a camera and it's odd. Odd behavior is not suspicion. So today we're going to go over Florida v. JL 529-US-266-2000. Reasonable suspicion requires that a tip be reliable in its assertion of illegality, not merely in its identification of someone. And that's what a lot of people are running into as far as, oh, he was wearing a black shirt and blue sneakers and he was walking around in the neighborhood. Or it was a guy with a camera standing out in front of the building. Or it's a variety of other things that have nothing to do with criminal activity. And yet police officers are saying, oh, well, somebody called because there was a suspicious person outside. Well, you suspect me of a crime that I've committed? We don't know. We, well, got, then a call, you keep, we got a call for a suspicious person in the area, so suspicious, we're investigating that. What's suspicious? Understanding where their duty, what their duty is, is being set forth in all these cases that we're discussing. The simple fact that you have an option of doing a constitutional act, having them come and say, hey, what are you doing out? And explaining, I'm out here taking pictures. Or I'm walking here because I'm going to the gym. I've actually had to use that one. And whatever it is that has nothing to do with anybody because you can't control the fears of others. And the last case I'm going to deal with today is the most important to me when it comes to reasonable suspicion. Because not only do you need something more than the identification of a person. In United States v. Cortez 449 U.S. 411 417 through 418. A police officer must articulate a particularized and objective basis for suspecting the particular person stopped of criminal activity. And that reinforces the reasonable suspicion requires that a tip be reliable in its assertion of illegality, not merely in a person's identification. Because when you get in a call, you understand Okay, this guy might be scared because of whatever. Come out, explain what they're doing, and that be it. It's the extra that causes the divide in the community between the police and the citizens. Or in other words, the governed and the governors. So understand, the police are the servants. The citizens are the masters. It's when they get those positions twisted and they begin to not understand that they are supposed to work towards your benefit if they are not working towards your benefit then they don't need to be wearing the badge until next time